Hey, space enthusiasts! Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into the outer reaches of our solar system to talk about a dynamic duo, Pluto and its moon, Charon. But hold on, something's not quite right, and we need to discuss it. Let's get started. As many of you know, Pluto was once considered the ninth planet in our solar system. However, in 2006, the International Astronomical Union reclassified it as a dwarf planet. Despite its demotion, Pluto remains a fascinating celestial object, especially when we consider its largest moon, Charon. So, why are we talking about Pluto and Charon today? Well, it turns out this pair is more intriguing than we thought. Charon is about half the size of Pluto, making them somewhat like a double dwarf system, and they exhibit some unique characteristics that have puzzled scientists, Astronomy textbooks for 76 years stated that there were nine major planets in our solar system, not the eight that are depicted on modern representations. And the reason for this is because Pluto, everyone's favorite frigid globe, was downgraded from major planet to dwarf planet in 2006. At the time, there was a great deal of debate over Pluto's categorization, which even gave rise to the term Plutoed, which refers to being demoted. Many people still think that this amazing frozen planet ought to be the ninth major planet from the Sun. However, there is still another argument concerning Pluto that appears to have been overlooked. The question of whether or not the planet's largest moon, Charon, is a moon at all. Pluto's narrative is one of discovery, controversy, and a crucial choice that led to the discovery of a new class of objects. However, are we viewing this far-off planet and its supposedly massive moon incorrectly? Could Pluto and Charon actually be our solar system's first double planet system? You're viewing V101 Space. My name is Rob. If you like my videos, please hit the bell to receive notifications when I publish new content. Pluto is a minor planet that belongs to the Kuiper Belt area of space. Red snow, azure skies, extraordinarily tall mountains, and glaciers shaped like hearts are some of its highlights. Though it is one of the most fascinating objects in the solar system, the frozen dwarf planet is made much more fascinating by its largest moon, Charon, which is sometimes overlooked. While Clyde Tombaugh found Pluto in 1930, astronomer James Christie didn't find Charon until 1978. At first, it was supposed to be called Persephone, after the Greek mythological Persephone, daughter of Zeus, who was taken by Pluto and crowned queen of the underworld. However, Christie suggested that it be dubbed Charon instead, after the ferryman who transported souls to the underworld by crossing the Styx River. However, he mispronounced it as Charon instead of Charon because he wished to devote the finding of the moon to his wife, Charlene. Prior to NASA's New Horizons mission in 2015, not much was known about Charon. The mission revealed an odd surface with unexpected features. Its north pole is covered in a massive red formation that was subsequently found to be caused by Pluto's tiny atmosphere colliding with its frozen surface. More than 1,600 kilometers 994 miles, of breathtaking canyon make up its surface, it is at least four times longer and, in some areas, twice as deep as the Grand Canyon. Along with several unusual features, there was one mound that was termed the mountain in the moat since it was found inside a deep depression. Approximately half the width of Pluto, at 1,200 kilometers 746 miles, it is the largest known moon in the solar system in relation to its parent body. Is Charon, therefore, more appropriately classified as a dwarf planet than a moon? If that's the case, are Pluto and Charon the first two double planetary systems in our solar system? Although binary objects are not uncommon in the universe, roughly one-third of the star systems in the Milky Way galaxy are believed to be binary, double planets are predicted to be far less common. Regrettably, it is difficult to specify the parameters that separate a planet-moon system from a binary planet. However, the most widely applied criterion relates to the orbits of each item around each other. In essence, the object's centers of mass must be outside of their bodies. In reality, two objects in a binary system are orbiting their common center of mass rather than each other, as you might suppose. We refer to this position as the barycenter. There is a center of mass for every item. 
An object's center of mass is the precise location where it can be balanced. It is the center of all the material that makes up the thing. You may easily see this by balancing a ruler on your finger. However, there are situations when the center of mass is not in the center, for instance, a sledgehammer can only be balanced much closer to its heavier end. A center of mass is shared by two or more objects in orbit around one another in space. The barycenter is often the object nearest to the massiest item, it functions similarly to an imaginary point that all objects orbit. The barycentric coordinates of the Earth-Moon system are located roughly 4,671 kilometers, 2,902 miles, above the planet's center. This indicates that the Moon actually circles the Earth because these coordinates are internal to the planet and are located underneath its surface, indicating that a double planet system cannot be applied to it. However, for Pluto and Charon, this is not the case. The barycentric coordinates in this case are located roughly 2,126 kilometers, or 1,321 miles, above Pluto's center. In other words, every object circles a point apart from Pluto. This point is in orbit around the Sun, and Nix, Styx, Kerberos, and Hydra, Pluto's other four moons, also circle around it. Just one system of objects orbiting a common center of mass is larger than Pluto. Prior to Pluto's reclassification in 2006, many people really believed Charon and Pluto to be two separate planets due to their smaller sizes. However, I believe there is a compelling case to be made for these far-off frozen worlds to be re-examined as the first confirmed double dwarf planet system in our solar system. The International Astronomical Union, which establishes standards for planetary science, defines a dwarf planet as a celestial body that orbits the Sun, has enough mass to take on a shape that is almost spherical, but has not yet cleared the area surrounding its orbit, in contrast to a major planet. It is not Pluto's moon if Charon does not orbit it, and it is also a dwarf planet if it satisfies the first two criteria of the IAU's classification for dwarf planets. By these definitions, Charon and Pluto are binary dwarf planet systems if they both orbit a mass center that is not Pluto. They could not be the only ones either, as it's also conceivable that Eris and its moon, Dysnomia, two far-off worlds, are two different kinds of double dwarf planets. Orcus and its moon Vanth, as well as Varda and Ilmare, might be the same. It is unknown how these double dwarf planets or even double planets originate, however, it is believed that Charon may have formed similarly to how our own moon did during a massive impact event. It's possible that a massive object slammed Pluto in the distant past, tearing off a blob that later became Charon. Binary planets may exist if the galaxy is teeming with binary stars. Numerous binary asteroids have been found in our solar system, why not also include binary dwarf planets in this category? Although there was a lot of controversy around Pluto's reclassification in 2006, scientists who decided to designate it as a dwarf planet were merely correcting a decades-old error. However, is that still possible? Is there a compelling case to be made that it belongs in a different category? As the first two recognized twin dwarf planets in our solar system, should Pluto and Charon be placed in a different class? We learned about the peculiar characteristics of Pluto and Charon in this video, but there are more ways to investigate these intriguing planets. One such option is to spin about freely on a globe, and we can do just that with the help of today's video sponsor, Mova Globes. A MOVA globe of Pluto, my favorite small world, sits next to me on my desk while I'm doing my videos about remote locations. Because MOVA globes employ realistic, incredibly detailed images supplied by NASA and JPL, I can look over at my miniature Pluto and see what new things I can find on its surface when I need a break from the screen. Pluto is covered in wonderful characteristics. What's even better is that the globe rotates on its own, utilizing the force of light, so I don't even need to move it to look around. They have a first-of-its-kind technology inside that combines solar cells and magnets that react to the Earth's magnetic field to generate electricity, so they don't require batteries or power cords. Simply remove the box from yours, and it will start rotating freely in a matter of seconds. Not only do MOVA globes feature Pluto, but they also have over 40 other designs that each replicate a different global map, a well-known piece of art, or, my personal favorite, the Space Collection. Although I genuinely love having my MOVA globe on my desk, it would look fantastic elsewhere in the house. One incredible aspect that, in my opinion, virtually makes the globe come to life and feels even more like the worlds on which it is based is its smooth, light-powered rotation. 
I hope you enjoyed viewing it, and I'll see you again soon if you want to add a little bit of the solar system to your house or place of business.